Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Good afternoon, guys. Um, today, what I just want to do, um, won't really be a simulation session, but it will be a somewhat of a live example in terms of how I would go about attacking NASDAQ. Um, but for this um, experimentation, I'll be using 0 0.02 lots because the idea is for me to try and uh, see if I can actually manage risk on this one. Because if I use the lowest possible, I won't be able to cut down in terms of position sizing. So looking at how I actually look at the markets is we start things off from a high time frame. So on the daily, uh, we are bullish, uh, which basically means I am looking for buys right now. Um, I wouldn't be looking to take any shorts at this uh, point. So let me just delete everything here. And okay, so as you can see, we pretty much are coming out of this range um, that we were in um, at this point. And price right now has that ability to actually push on higher to come to 12.409 level. So I have that anticipation because we've largely been ranging pretty aggressively. Okay, so with that in mind, you know, I am bullish. So if we go down to the four hour, let's look if we can actually find key levels of structure. So the first level uh, would be this uh, near term four hour support. Okay. So on this four hour, the prior four hour candle, okay, we had price action pushing up. And now price is possibly showing some rejection, all right? So I'm still looking for longs. And if you go on to the 60 minutes, okay, we have a range pretty much, uh, which is here. So from the lowest low uh, to the high, it's about 32 pips. So price has an ability to maybe come down, test this near-term level of support because we pretty much broke out uh, of this uh, range, okay, for a continued move to the upside. Now, what I did, there was a trade I just took earlier on uh, right now. Um, it was at the break, I believe, of this, uh, let's just go on the 15. Yeah, so we had the, I was watching price action at this range, okay? And we had this candle uh, forming, all right? So once it broke, I took an entry on this candle for some uh, buys, I believe. Or was it this candle? Let's just quickly see. Okay, yes, it was actually at this candle. Five minutes. Uh, let's just mark it. Yeah, so I took buys on this candle. Uh, since it was the candle that broke, uh, it broke out of this range. Okay, and it broke above uh, the previous candle wick, giving me an anticipation that we could see price uh, pushing up further. So let me just go back so we can draw uh, support and resistance. Okay, on the one hour, well, we broke out of that range. Uh, let's see if we can actually draw some more structure levels. Okay, so we have a minor level of support. Okay, uh, right here. Let's go on the 15 minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna draw this in, All right? So my anticipation now would be to see if we can actually form support um, at this level for us to actually take buys onto the upside. Because again, I'm still bullish uh, on, on, on NASDAQ. Let's go on the five minute uh, the trading time frame. And what are we doing? Just watching price action at this point, just to see if we can actually test uh, this near term level, okay, of possible support, because we had a range. Okay, so that's uh, where I'm at uh, at this point. So it's all about just being patient and waiting, uh, just waiting for price action. Because basically the idea is if we can have uh, 10 pip stop loss, 10 pips or, 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 or less uh, as a stop loss, uh, we are good. 
that's what I actually go for. So the targets are typically 10 pips, looking for 10 pips out of the market. Uh, we're not shooting for the moon. Um, we just want steady uh, returns. Um, because another thing, I'm reason why I'm doing this uh, would be to show you as well how to actually manage a trade. So once you are in a trade, because I'm sure in the session, uh, I will be able to take a trade. And then I'll show you how to actually manage it. Uh, because there was a trade I did take early on, it was $100 in terms of risk. Um, and I was able to, I lost on the trade, but I didn't lose $100. I ended up losing $25 because I was able to manage the trade and lose less. Because the idea is you want to always try and lose or, yeah, you want to try and lose less in the markets. Uh, uh, and then what's going to happen over time is that your winners are actually going to look bigger. Because if you look at it, I I taking scalps basically uh, on the markets. I'm looking for high probability trades um, that are in the direction of the overall market. Because I can even go down to the one minute time frame as well to look for snapper entries as well. Uh, it's not really a bad idea to do that as well. So um, yeah, that's. That's what I, I'm experimenting with NASDAQ. Because again, NASDAQ for me at this point is just purely experimental. And once I start to get a feel in terms of how NASDAQ actually moves um, in the flow, because I can see there's a, a more volume in the afternoons um, in South African time uh, from pretty much, I'd have to say 5 p.m. Now, so from 5 to about 9 or 10 p.m., you know, we have some decent moves uh, on NASDAQ. And, and that is actually during um, New York session. So we'll see. We'll see in terms of, you know, what uh, NASDAQ wants to actually give us uh, at this point, because uh, all we want is just 10 pips. We're not, we're not shooting for the moon um, at, at this, uh, this stage. We're not going for 100 pips, 200 pips. It's, 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 it's not what, what I'm going for. I'm just looking for just steady 10 pips. And the idea is to always scale uh, on, 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 on this. So we'll see. Uh, maybe as time goes on, we'll move on from like 0 0.02 to like 0 0.04 to 0 0.10 lots to one lot, two lots as I grow. So I'm taking it slow, uh, I'm, not in, I'm not in a rush. The idea is for us to manage the trade and to lose less, to lose less and to make sure that when I take a trade, there's enough room for profits, uh, if that makes sense. So it's trading is a numbers game. Uh, it's a numbers game, uh, it's not so much about um, if I lose this trade or if I win this trade, you know, it's about the probability over time, okay, to actually just build consistency. Uh, and yeah, that's what it is uh, at this point. So the way it is right now, we are not getting down to where I was anticipating. And what price is doing is there is another level that it's trying to form or oh, that is apparent right now, which is the short term level of support, okay? Which the market has formed on the on the one minute. Let's see if it's evident on the five. Mm, yeah, actually it is on the five. So the one minute, uh, yeah. And what's happening as well, we are breaking out of this range, right? And these are the highs on the on the 60 minutes. That price is most likely to come to. Because again, whether you're looking at this in a higher time frame, you know, the process again is it's the same. The process is the same. Because we're looking at at violation, we're looking to see what price action does at particular uh, at at certain levels, okay, in the markets and forming a bias, like if I'm bullish, I want to take bias below here. And the best level though to take bias would be above this range. So above 11.642 will be a nice uh, zone to take bias. 
because if we go back, uh, so if you go back, um, there's clean traffic on the higher time frames. If you go all the way back to the daily, so if we can break and close above um, the daily high, there's clean traffic above, which means price has an easier time moving up, you know, than to actually look for sales. That makes sense. Okay, so the best place to look for buys right now, where in terms of where price is at, it'll be above that level. So. Okay, so um, yeah, it's about patience. Uh, and then we're gonna wait and see if we can actually break above, above uh, 11.644 on those highs. Cause if we can do that, we have a good chance that price is going to rally. We are going to rally uh, to the upside. So we're just gonna watch and see uh, what price does at this level. And remember, price might have a difficult time to just blow through. It's possible. Sometimes it might be easier. Price could just fly out of that out of that zone. Okay, because remember, it's it, it's a it's a key level. It's a key level. It's a key level of resistance. Because you can see, let me just delete this. Okay, so you can see we're struggling though at this point. I would say. I would say price action is struggling a little bit. It's a bit shy to actually break uh, through that range um, because as you can see, we didn't actually struggle much uh, to get to that level, to that level of resistance. Uh, we didn't actually struggle much at all. Even though I did lose a trade, I was looking for buys, um, but anyways, I'm still bullish on Ness. Okay. Right, so it's all about patience. It's all about patience. Because usually when price breaks key levels, um, you know, it tends to move aggressively. Uh, so, because another thing that might also happen is uh, we might see a push. Okay, there's a push coming in slowly. Because another thing is we could see a push up and then a rejection which means that uh, there could be filled. So there could be orders being filled for sales. That's possible as well. Um, so we could maybe see a retrace for a continued move to the upside. So I just wanted to just share, give like an actual example in terms of you know, seeing price move you know, in, 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 in real life. <laughs> I won't say real life. <laughs> in real world situations. So this is NASDAQ. And again, this is just purely technical, purely technical analysis. And the way price is printing at those points gives me a, a clear idea that possibly next week we are going to be seeing a bullish run on NASDAQ. Because remember today is the end of the week, it's a Friday and you know, prices finally moving because for the past couple of days you know we've been ranging and it's, it's just not been pretty so if price can start to break and us creating some highs uh, that would be awesome that would be awesome okay okay so somewhat forming a support here okay so with that support maybe price would Come back down here and could see a push up. It's, it's possible. It's possible. So let me just pause the recording. Okay, let's see what price does at this minor level of support. Remember again, this is the one minute guys. I don't like to take confirmation on <laughs> the one minute, 
but just watching price. So long as we can form support, um, then um, we could see price continuing higher. But again, what's also possible again for sales, uh, maybe, okay, let's do this. All right. Okay, so here, in terms of price action, this level is crucial, I think. Okay, because the price right now, what, what it's doing, it, it's trying to establish whether are we gonna continue to go up or are we going to break this level of support? Maybe create a pullback and come back down uh, to this next level of support. Okay. So those are the possibilities. As you can see, we had a bearish close. Now, with this bearish close, it gives us an indication that, okay, now there could be some bulls now starting to enter the market, okay? And also remember when this closed, it closed with no range, okay? So it was a momentum push to the downside, all right? So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see how price actually does, okay? Because again, there's no hard and fast rule in terms of uh, maybe where my line is at, that's that's exactly where support is at. Okay. So again, support could be also at this zone slightly below there. Okay. So we could maybe be forming support at this level, right here. Yeah? Maybe price will come back, do some sort of a retrace to push back up. You know, that's that's also possible. So you, you always need to look at things from both sides if you were to be taking sales. So if I'll be taking sales, all I'll be looking for is for price to push down, create a retest or a retest or create some form of resistance, then a push to the downside to my next key level of possible support. And if I'm looking for buys, I'm looking for price to hold through this support level for price to continue moving up, okay. Pretty much that's what I, I, I would be looking for. So the key thing is for us to be at a key level of support. And so far the confirmations are somewhat weak. You know, are weak, you know, we haven't really formed a key level of support where we're seeing like a clear rejection where we're rejecting or we're holding at a support level. So just, just, we just gotta wait, just gotta wait. Okay, because again, we rejected this level once. Okay, can we do it as the second time? Can we may, maybe have wake a price maybe coming slightly the, the down but closing above this range. That will give us an indication that, okay, price action now is creating some sort of support at this zone, all right? Which then will further give us some confirmation that, okay, the bulls are still in control, okay, of the market, all right? So it's, it's just about patience. You just gotta wait, wait for your opportunity, okay? But ideally, I would love to take buys below at this zone, at this level. But there's cleaner buys above though, um, above this, this current range that is forming right now. There's cleaner buys on the upside. But if you are taking sales, you have about 15 pips, which is not that big of a range. <sighs> So again, we're consolidating. So basically just, just give us a, an idea that, you know, it's a key level um, that we are at right now. Cause if you're looking at the daily as well, you know, if you can break through that level, you know, it's, it's clear skies above. You know, 
got almost about 700 pips onto the upside. Four hour candles looking bullish, looking nice and strong. 60 minutes as well, looking bullish. Okay. 30 minutes looking bullish. All right. So all these signs on the 15 minutes as well, we're looking bullish. Five minutes, we're looking bullish. Okay. So there's no time frame at this point that's telling me, okay, we're looking for sales. The time frames are all saying there is a high probability that we are moving up in terms of price, in terms of NASDAQ. Um, going back to my trade as well, just to, for you to see. This was it, $100 worth of risk, okay? Took partials, lost $4.60. Second uh, cancellation, or when I closed off the full position, I got stopped out, $21.80. Total risk was $100. I ended up losing less, okay? So the key thing again here is to always look to lose less. Always try to lose less. And then your winners will actually look bigger at the end of the day. They will look bigger. So what we're we doing again, this price is just ranging at this point. We are ranging, maybe like a five pip range, six pips. Six pip range. But this was nice though for buys. Okay, oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Now this one minute candle is doing what the other candles couldn't do basically. <laughs> so we pay close attention to see how this candle actually closes. You know, can we close above this wick? Okay, because this is now the key factor. Can we close above this wick? If we can close above this wick, it means that there is a high probability that price is gonna continue higher. And if you are an experienced trader, you can actually even take impulse buys on this trade, okay? Which means that you'd actually look to take buys. Now, this would actually make sense. Okay, now, we, now we're moving, okay? And I'm somewhat late in the party <laughs> to take buys. Uh, if we can pull maybe a little bit back, uh, I'd look to take some buys here, because now we're pushing. Now we are pushing up. Okay, now we're pushing. Okay. Somewhat missed it though. So let's see if we can come back. Let's see if we can come back. Because again, it's about speed. It's about speed. We're in the low, we're in the lower time frame. And I don't really recommend this type of trading if you are still new to trading, because again, the bias is, is bullish. You know, all the signs, all the time frame, are telling us that we are in bias. Okay, and price is not giving us a sign to actually pull back. That's the difficult part, you know, um, when taking really high probability trade setups, because we are not pulling back as much as. I need to, because I, I need price to be at a certain range or certain zone, even though the pips might make sense. Maybe, like if I were to get in at this trade, at that level, you know, and I have my stops below, it's like 17 pips, okay? But then the optimal trade entry would be at the zone, see? So all these possible buyers, okay? Possible buyers. But I need price to pull back for me to actually take a trade, to take buys. If we can pull back, maybe come down to 11.650s, uh, yeah, then it will make more sense for me to take a trade. But other than that, it just doesn't make sense. 
we are pushing up, uh, I'd have to say steadily, pushing up steadily, because NASDAQ, it's a beast, it, it, it moves. Let's look at five minutes. Okay, five minute bullish close, All right? 15 minutes, we bullish. Uh, 30 minutes, we are bullish. One hour, all the time frames. We are bullish in all the time frames. Okay, let's watch now. Are we coming down? Can we? Can we? Can we come down low enough? Okay. Okay. This now is our new key level of support. Can we come down to that range for us to take buys? Which basically means, can we retrace to that level to look for buys? Okay. Okay, looking good. Now, there's something else I want to make a note of, yeah? And that is how price is actually reacting at this point. So let's hypothetically say we took buys here. And then this candle is one minute closed bearish. Then at this point, I'd have to think, okay, for me to manage my risk, and let's say, for example, my stop loss is maybe midpoint of this candle. Then since we have two bearish candles closing like this, I would have probably closed my full position off at this level because it means there's a high probability the next candle will be bearish because this candle was bearish. We closed below the open of the below the close of the previous candle. All right. And then this candle closed below the open of the previous candle, giving me an anticipation that uh we are losing steam for the buys, okay? So I would have closed off that trade. All right, let's see. So, but I'm still, I still, I'm still bullish, I'm still bullish. I'm gonna see if we can come down and just, just retest um, 11.650. And if we can't do that, look for buys uh, and then, take a trade to the upside, but you would have taken on a bullish candle though, not on a bearish candle. Okay, so the lower time frames are difficult to trade. <laughs> but so far things are moving quite smoothly, I'd say. I would say. So okay, gotta put it close. That's nice. That's nice. Because the key thing for me is, I just want to make sure I'll end this uh, the stream once I'm able to take a trade. Okay, now we're coming back, okay, to 11.60. Fine, we're tapping that level, ooh, coming back up. All I want right now is, let's come to our zone. So the key thing is to let price action come to you. We are not chasing price. We're going to let it come to us. Okay, and then the question might be then, okay, once price maybe creates some sort of support at 11.650, where then would my stops be? My stops would be below, uh, roughly around 11.647. Yeah, 11, right. So it's about three, four pips, stop loss, okay, yeah. 
because again, it's just purely for for an example sake. But ideally, my stop loss, is, I, I like to set it about ten pips, because if I then I want to be taking that trade there, I'd be looking at stops uh, below the next level of support. Okay, just below that range, and then watching price action, and how I would play it is if price comes to my midpoint at five pips. I'll evaluate and see whether to close the trade. Um, no. An aggressive way of doing it would be if a candle closes bearish, for example, if you're bullish, but closes uh, bearish. Okay, let's watch on this one. My tick buys uh, this uh, to the close. Okay, my tick buys on this. Bam, tick buys. There we go. Then set stop loss, set it for six pips. All right, so then targets, uh, I'll go for 10. See if we can actually get 10 pips out of this. Okay. See if we can get 10. Now, now we add uh, we a phase of, okay, how then do we go about managing now this trade okay and the way in which um management kicks in now uh will be looking at how price action closes so if price at this point for me since it's uh six pips so if price moves against me three pips uh, let's see i think it's doing that right now uh yeah we had three pips I would need to actually cut get cut off half a position. Okay. Uh, cut half. Okay. All right. And then I'm letting the other portion of the trade play out. Okay. Letting the other portion of the trade play out. So if you were to notice the risk on this trade would have been $2.60. Okay. And the goal is two bucks, two bucks, two bucks. So all I'm doing now is just watching this trade. And it's either we're gonna hit my stop loss. Okay. Or we're gonna hit targets. It's one of two things. And as price moves in my favor, um, I'll show you how I manage the trade as well, how I, I move my stop loss so so as to minimize losses. All right, so so long as we're closing bullish, you know, it's it's good. It's good. Okay. There we go. Because right now we pretty much are ranging. We are ranging right now. We are ranging. We are ranging again. Okay. Because again, if you look at it, I'd have to say this was a a good trade. Number one, we were patient. Uh, the original idea is number one, all the time frames were bullish. Number two uh, was the fact that we broke a key level of uh, of, of of resistance. Which, uh, which is as, well, yeah, was at this level we broke. Okay, if I was impatient, I would have entered um, the trade. Uh, yeah, I would have entered the trade late, which means I'd have entered it while it was expensive, if we put it that way. Then it would have meant that as price moved against me, I, I would have had to close off the positions. But then it didn't. Okay, so all we, I had to do was to just be patient for a couple of minutes up until price action gave us uh, a bullish opportunity, which was at this uh, bullish candle, which I took buys. The next candle um, 
gave us an opportunity to actually manage our trade, which means a closed half um, as, as the trade went three pips against me, because remember the risk was, was six pips, okay, on this trade. And uh, once we've reached three pips, I tried to close, but price did push up a little bit. So it meant that I, I lost less, okay. Next candle was bullish. Next candle was bullish, this was bearish. So at this point, it's either we're gonna hit my stop loss or we're gonna hit my targets. And it is possible that, um, so if, if we can continue to push further up, I'd look to tighten my stop loss to try and get it as close to my entry as possible for me to continue to actually manage that trade and lose less, okay. So again, th this is just an example in terms of, you know, what trade management looks like at a faster pace, okay? You can also do the same thing I'm doing right now uh, uh, on the higher time frames, okay? Even with any, with any currency pair, if you're trading Forex or if you're trading indices, you know, you're still doing the same thing, still doing the same thing. Because again, if you take a look at it, where my stop loss is, all right, the stop loss is below a key level of support, which means that if price breaks and closes back into this range, it means there is a possibility that uh, the, the bears now are in control and they're trying to push the market lower, right? But ideally where you would look to uh, have stops would be somewhere down here at 11638 meaning that if we break and close below this key level of support, okay, which was in the past, it would mean that we are now in reversal mode. You know, that's what it means. So right now, price is just ranging. It's just not sure where it wants to go. Let's look at the five minutes so that we don't get crazy. Okay. 15 minutes looking bearish. 30 minutes bullish, one hour bullish. So all the time frame are bullish besides the 15. Okay, now it's bullish. Right. So for me, this is how trading should be. Now, now let's manage this trade. Let's move our stop loss slightly a little bit up, all right? Because if you look at it, this current one minute candle has done what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. In the past 12 minutes, all these candles couldn't do what this candle is doing. Giving us an indication that, okay, the buys now are, are starting to step in. Plus at the same time, if you're looking at this bearish candle, it's doing what one at these one, two, three, four bearish candles couldn't do, you know? But still, we will hold. Okay, let me just move the stop again, just tighten it more, because I can see we're moving quite up. Okay, because again, the key to this thing is we want to try and lose less. I understand you might be looking at this and be like, oh, see, uh, what's the point? Because you're going to be gaining 0 0.82. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, let me just move this again to the previous candle. Okay. So right now I have broken even on the trade. Yeah, pretty much. So let's see what this candle, can this candle hit our targets? And if it can, it would mean that today would have been, even if you were risking a thousand dollars, okay, it would mean one, you took up a, a, a trade in line with a plan. So you had a trading plan, you know. The key thing here was the fact that, you know, all the time frames, all the time frames, we were bullish, you know. All the time frames were saying we we bullish again, we closed off. And that's it. So the idea in trading is to always do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, you know, 
for me, I'd say this would have, is a perfect trade, is a good trade because we waited, we were patient. Okay, we waited for price to pull back to a key level. Okay, key level of support. Took buys on the confirmation, okay, uh, of, of this bullish candle. Okay, when price started to turn against us, we didn't close the full positions because we still had a belief or I had a belief that the trade would work out, all right? So I let my other, uh, I took half positions and I let the other position run, which means in the other positions, if it stopped me out, it stopped me out, right? We were patient. And then this candle or this um, bullish uh, engulfing candle gave the hope that, okay, the bulls are still in control. We had our targets and the trade was taken. So this is a good example in terms of what trading uh, is like. It's about patience. And over time, as you grow as a trader, you know, all you need to focus on is growing this, the position size, okay? To grow the position size, that is what the focus is on, okay? That is the key focus. As you can see, we lost less. The trade gave us $2.20. It's not much, but if we if this was two lots or 20 lots, you know, this figure would be massive. All we were looking for, again, we we're just looking for 10 pips. We were not looking for a thousand, I wasn't looking for a thousand pips or 500 pips or 200 pips. I was just looking for that perfect trade, all right? And it literally did what I, where I waited for price to do what I wanted it to do according to my plan. So all it is is about making sure that, you know, you, you have a game plan each and every day, whether you're day trading or whether you're swing trading, you need to have something that's consistent, okay? As simple as this, this, this methodology that I'm, I'm talking about and I'm, and I'm showing you, for some people, it takes a long time to learn this, the idea of patience, because in trading, we get paid to wait. We're not paid so much in terms of how many trades we can take. We get paid in terms of how patient can we be for us to execute on our trading plan. So that's what it is. Uh, and I hope this video was actually helpful and gave you an idea in terms of how my trading is on a day-to-day -day basis, especially on scalps, because I don't really take uh, swing trades anymore. I like to be in the market for a certain period of time, then exit. So that's how my trading is right now. It has evolved from actual swing trading. So whatever you do, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care. See you on the next one.